Okay guys, this stuff just keeps happening. Motorcycles just find me. And like I said, I'm a connoisseur of cheap motorcycles. I got a text from my neighbor uh, two days ago. A text, uh, just an image. And it was of a motorcycle, all the plastics off and, stu and such. And I said, oh, that's a nice project. And what year and model? And he said, 85 combo Kawasaki Suzuki early fuel injected motors locked up, heavy cylinder rust with scope, lots of parts. And I said, sounds interesting. And then he wrote back, when you want to come get it. And I said, what do you want for it? He said, whatever you will give me for it. So the next day he sent me a text and goes, it's free, come and get it. Like I said, guys, I'm a connoisseur of cheap motorcycles. And in this case, free motorcycles. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we can put it back together. Let's go pick it up. Okay guys, here we are with our Kawasaki GPZ 1100 from 1983. So as I was going through all the, the parts bin, all this stuff, I found the spark plugs and I was like, oh, well, let's check and see how it was running when it was running. And this is what they look like only because they were sitting in a, a bag that was full of water, right? Okay, so going past, what is that? Is that just full of water? Anything we do to this motorcycle, I can't hurt it more than what it is right now. We, uh, we have to assume, as rusty as what these cylinders are, that the case is the same way. Okay guys, so here we are. Here is the, I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's a, it's a nice shade of uh, caramel, right? It's, you can see it kinda, kinda wiggling around in there. And so it does look uh, kinda milky. That should be on the bottom. Yeah, if you look at it right there, as we go in, see, we can see the back of that. We can see the back of the, the valve right there. And then that's just all water, but that's just all water. We're gonna suck it out and see what it looks like, so. Let's see if it just moves. If it does anything, I don't think it will, but rather go with the big one around here. So let's see. Let's see. Let's let's give it a go. See what do you know? Odds that this thing moves. I'm not gonna put a bar on it or anything. I, I don't want to crank on it too hard. I just want to see if I can get it to move with this. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? Oh, it's uh, it did move like a look, my juice is coming out. Oh, did you see that? It's actually moving. Is this the correct way? Yeah, this is the way it's supposed to turn, so. Hey, 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 I am making the mess to end all messes. I could have cleaned it out, but I guess I am cleaning it out. Hey, this thing is spinning. I don't know about you guys, but that engine doesn't seem like it's seized anymore. Here, this is number four. Still looks, looks rough. Let's look at number three. Number three, there's the, the valve open. Number three is at the top. Okay, so this is number two. Look at that. Cylinder wall, oh, oh, that cylinder looks pretty good. Top of the piston looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the cylinders again with a vapor rust, and then I'm just gonna let it sit. Okay, we're gonna suck this stuff out. Okay, I'm gonna spray them full of brake cleaner. Again, it can't hurt. 
but and then I'm gonna suck it out. Let's just use the, the air compressor to, to blow it out. Let's see what'll happen. This is cylinder number one. That's the back of the valve right there, back of the exhaust valve. This looks pretty good. Cylinder walls look pretty good. See, it just had trash in there. It's what we were looking at. So that's it. Let's look at number two. Whoa, that looks pretty good. I'm thinking this thing is usable. Here we are, number three. Again, back of the valve. See if we can skate by that exhaust valve. Come on. Oh, intake valve, sorry. Look at that. This guy looks like some staining on the wall. See, there's still trash. Look at that. See that, that stuff running down right there? That's just, see that, that right there? That's just trash. You can see it running back down. So, yeah, I think it just needs some more cleaning. Let's see, I do have the Speedo in here. Okay, so drum roll please for the guess of mileage. Hold on, look in there. Does that say 5,466.9 miles? 5,000 miles on it? That's crazy town if it is. State that, it, that this one's in is, there's some paperwork in here. So like I found a receipt that has 623 2014 for some parts these are all parts the date is right there 429 14 the the sprocket was 618 14 so all this stuff was ordered around then right so i'm saying i'm guessing it was off the road 10 years ago let's dump the oil from the bottom end and let's see what that looks like I was right, there's water in the bottom end. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's all water, look. Okay, how long before we get some oil? It's still coming out. So that's two quarts so far of water. That's three plus. Is there some oil in here? Does this thing have a radiator? Oh, maybe it does. This is the radiator. Maybe this is the radiator. Is that the radiator? No, that's not a radiator. That's an oil cooler. Do we have any? I'm gonna need a bigger bucket. I'm definitely gonna need a bigger boat. Holy crap. Come on, it's gotta stop at some point. How big is this case? I'm, I'm gonna need a bigger boat. I seriously, that is an oil cooler. Okay, I've gotta stop this because I, I, my, my bucket is full. That's ridiculous. Let me go get another one. Guys, this is bananas. Look at this. I don't know how big this bucket is, how much it holds. This is all mostly water. You saw it coming out. Guys, I'm feeling pretty good about the rotating assembly of this motorcycle. My only area of concern with this motorcycle is uh, actually two, maybe three areas. Uh, the front forks because I'd rather put some uh, stock forks on it. The rear swing arm, because we know this one does not work because it, it, you get no suspension at all. And, and number three, probably the most important to me, this ECU. Stored outside with no seat on it, I'm guessing this guy is gonna be pretty toasty. So I think that's gonna be our biggest challenge because that's gonna stop us from, from 
running the engine. We went through the cabinet of wonders and this is what we came up with. So just a little bit in here, just lubricate the top end. Really just gonna let it sit like this. We had spark on one and four, but we didn't have spark on two and three. And I tested the coil, the coil was bad. So we have the coil installed. I didn't see that, but it looks like spark to me. Let's check this one. Hey, looks like you got it on both of them. Maybe I guess not. Let's try again. Okay guys, let's see if we can do this again. You heard it, you saw it. You saw it, so we did it. Let's see if it happens again. We got the throttle body off of the free GPZ and it is surprising that it even ran. Although what's crazy is these two look pretty good. But it's that's pretty crusty. And the we're seized up that we were seized in there just all crusty. So I'm gonna see if I can clean them up get it to work a little bit better and pull the injectors off and go from there. But that's pretty bad. Like I said, surprising that it even ran. So I got a message earlier today from the guy that I got the free GPZ from. So he dropped off the seat and there's the seat. It has one little nick right there for the GPZ. This thing looks awesome. This is it, dirty. Underneath, everything's there. And I want to check and see how, how awesome would this be? Right, if I pulled that up and there was actually a owner's manual under there, let's find out. 
Well, let's find out because that would be super cool. I don't think. Oh, <laughs> how much better does this get? Holy shit! I was about to say I don't think there's going to be one, and it's right here. How much cooler is this? Well, keep in mind, so be kind. This thing had been sitting for who knows how long outdoors with no spark plugs in it. The only bad thing wrong with this seat is it has a little split right here on the end. So what we're going to do is uh, patch it with some vinyl. Okay guys, so here it is. We sewed that seat up right there. It's, it was on the seat. When we're gonna go put it on the bike in just a moment. It's not there guys. Look, that's way better than what it was. You know it's there and it's still tough to see. It's Okay guys, I went ahead and put the seat back on the bike and it's right here. Hey, let me get you in close. It's it's right there, but original swing arm and original forks. I had 1983 for it, so I can then replace the GSXR front end and GSXR swing arm. All that goodness came in yesterday. And last night I get a text from the guy I got it from, who's his, it was his friend, and he goes, "Hey, he's got some other parts. So if you want, we can go tomorrow morning and pick them up." Here we are tomorrow morning. Let me show you what I got. Now keep in mind, I just bought the forks and the swing arm. So now I've got the swing arm, the correct wheels, fender, which I had already gotten another one, and then the forks. I got so far what I think to be everything I need to put this sucker back together which is what we're doing today. And for those of you guys who've been following along, 
you know that I had purchased a new front end for, um, from a 1984 Kawasaki GPZ only to find out that it was seven eighths of an inch longer. So what we did, and by I say we, my friend Bob, I mean, I drove it over there, is we made this one seven eighths of an inch shorter. Here's everything that we did to this steering stem to get it to where it is right now. Sit back and enjoy the machining wonders of Bob Scoggin. have not ridden this motorcycle yet and in about three weeks we plan on a little less than three weeks we plan on riding it about 3,000 miles round trip so our task today is exhaust gaskets it's we have a little tick just because when I put it back together I I didn't even check to see if it had exhaust gaskets we were putting it together just to stop flames from shooting out the front end of it Okay guys, so we now have the exhaust mounted up. Look, you can tell just that little symbol cleanup. I mean, I know it's not perfect, but that's way better than what it was. Little paint down there just to make it look a little bit better. And then let's see how it sounds. So just to... No more, no more ticking from the front end sounds so good I mean it sounds so good it's coming along it's starting to look really good I mean it's little things like the like cleaning up the exhaust that makes it look better there's another thing that I did 
that I'll show you guys is I went ahead and just ran some touch-up paint all along the bottom here where this was was rusted the painted flaked off was rusted you can see that there's some little ones right in here that I went ahead and touched up like this one I got to do a little bit more too as you can see but from 10 feet away it makes it look pretty good I did paint this rear rack I, I couldn't deal with it anymore the it only had a little bit of powder coating left in two spots right here and I just couldn't stand looking at it anymore but you can see like this this guy right here let me get you at the angle you can see it because it's bubbled but I went ahead and put some some touch-up paint on it on top of it it's a little bit more right here we'll touch up these a little bit more and then we'll wet sand on top of it just to get it to lay down a little bit more but for where we're going I think it's perfect for where this thing was neglected left for dead I mean, look how good these gauges look so we're getting close everything's put together really cool is everything up here works but well, you'll start to see that this is let me turn this light off so you can see it again I'll cycle it again because I think it's really cool so here you have top ones of fuel gauge and then these are your warning lights. You have a, uh, the side stand, oil, battery, and then the DFI, the fuel injection. So it does a system check, checks fuel, and then it does a system check all the way across to make sure it's good. If it wasn't, it would, you would get a warning right here that would say, hey, this is it. And then, <clears throat> kind of neat dash system. This is the left turn, right turn, high beam is right here. It's not going to come on because it's got to be running and then this is neutral and then when the headlights are on that comes on really cool thing is that this guy this little button right here this gauge which is neat the outside ring is rpms the inside ring is volt so if i click the volt one right now it shows you how much volts are in my uh voltage is in my battery which is cool and then how much is charging? So pretty cool. I mean, really kind of neat. You know, old, really old, old electronics when you think about it. You guys just see what happened did you see what happened this guy rolled out of the garage all on its own did it did it we did it we did it tomorrow we're going to take it on a a really good ride really shake it shake it out but this guy come on guys if you don't remember if you don't know the story of this kawasaki gpz 1100 it was left for dead it should not be doing what it's doing it should not be doing it, and it is. And we're gonna reward it by taking it to Colorado. Holy crap. Dude, this is so awesome. We, I did make, um, I did make a couple of laps in the neighborhood just to, uh, just to kind of shake it out. All right, love you. Oh, you're just coming back. Huh? You're just coming back from working out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're heading Rolling out. Rolling out, huh? Yep. Okay. See how it goes. Yeah. I will. That'd be awesome. Okay, man, we'll see you. Good luck, man. Yep. Yeah. We'll be in touch.
Hey guys, I gotta take a moment just to let you guys know. I took that left hand turn out of my, off my road onto the main road where I, I run so many laps on these old motorcycles. And I just started tearing up. And I, you know, hadn't quite figured out what's, what it is. I think it's the realization that when I made that left hand turn is I'm doing this. But this is happening. I don't know where the day is going to take us, but I know which way we're heading. And uh, that was just one of those moments, guys. And I challenge every one of you guys to have one, too. So let's get at this sucker. So guys, there you have it. The 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 1100 just chewed up 400 miles today. And guys, remember, I rode it for the first time three days ago. And this sucker is just putting in work. Good news, bad news. Good news is that it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Bad news is uh, we're on the side of the road. And now we have the, the dreaded warning light with, it says DFI. So, and it's not wanting to, to start. Okay guys, so, uh, you know, things may not be going the way I planned the way we planned, but you know, do they, they seldom do, right? But you got to find the silver lining in all these things. You know, I've been outside this Valero gas station for uh, a couple hours now trying to get this thing going, trying to get it to where I could leave and keep heading north. And, you know, BJ from Brickhouse Build is driving south, which is the generosity in that is, is incredible. You know, it was, there was a guy I ran into here. The guy's name was AJ. Was super friendly, super helpful. You know, willing to do anything he could to try to help me. There's only so much you can do, right? Uh, the girl that works inside Taylor, that works inside this store. Super nice, super friendly. She gave me a free bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. They were going to throw them out, so. You know, super friendly, super helpful. So, just got to be open to it, right? I could sit here and be 
uh, all pissy pants about it, or I could just be this is, you know, you set out on a cross country trip and there's some things that are going to go across. And how do you deal with it? How do you manage it? How do you make it happen? You might as well be in a good mood. I mean, it's a beautiful day. And uh, the guy Bill's on the way to pick me up. And so we're going to start heading north. So, guys, stick with us. This journey's far from over. So what do we do? The new spark plugs. That's probably the biggest difference. New oil. New oil. Uh, checked all of the connectors for the DFI. Mm -hmm. Can't confirm that it was causing an issue, right. but at least tightening the pins up, making sure there's no play, because like they're they're yeah. very loose connections. Yeah. At least confirming or making that um, less of a potential failure or issue. That's you know? that's got to be. We didn't turn the petcock on. Yeah. Turn the petcock on first. We should have done that at the very beginning. We'd probably yeah. be done. The other thing that we did do is we um, eliminated the cylinders as a problem. The yeah. piston. Not not forever, but it's not, it wasn't so far. We'll ride it around By the assessing the level of metallic in the oil, doesn't seem excessive per, given the history of the bike. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, it was metallic and not rust, so I'm happy. Yeah. It's cleaning itself. It's it's exfoliating. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know that's what we did, and and so far, as of right now, now we'll ride it around the block and see what it does. <laughs> Yeah. I was coming around that corner one time on a CB 
750 Yeah. Just like not thinking, I kept going. I ended up in these rocks. Oh my gosh. Rode it like right. Yeah, yeah. Never dumped it. it. Came out, smashed the header. But oh gosh. Played it down. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so cool. it's still doing it, but it's it, but it must be that lean stumble. Okay. Not as bad as what it was doing before. Okay. So. There, I'm trying to think of how to how to MacGyver riching in and up. Uh, we could restrict the airbox because we can't can't get in that. Unless you try to like clean the injectors. Yeah. If they were dirty. Right, right, right. But it's. <laughs> And, and, and yeah, not through it. Like if that's me, that was me. It just died. So, but not not through it. Like if I'm if I'm accelerating through it, it doesn't stumble at all. I guess because it goes through that gap so quickly. Yeah. Uh, but it's just when sustained, and it didn't do it right off. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's not all the time. It's not like every time I hit three or four, three to four thousand RPMs, it, it doesn't do it. Just does it. But it's the good thing is it's super strong, right? When when I get into it, the only bad thing is I'm running into to this little lean stumble, if that's what based on what was said. And so, um, it's what can what can I do? Do you think maybe you got bad fuel? It, it could have been that. I, I think it's it's in, I, I think it may be fuel related, but it's the way this guy controls it. Yeah. Is what I'm what I'm thinking right now. We'll figure it out. Well, it's, it's better now. Let's see if it does what it should right we'll just, now. We'll make a right, and then we'll turn right back onto that road. Okay. And then we'll go down, Come back up. and then make a right, and then just keep looping. Let's see if it starts back up. Like, just try to start it without throttle. Yep. See, now it's doing that. That's with the, the uh, uh, fast like idle on. High idle. Like yeah, it's doing the same thing. Attempting to continue our ride to Colorado. Again, we're in St. Louis right now at, thanks a lot, Brickhouse Builds. BJ, guys. BJ was, his generosity is through the roof. After we slept on it for a bit, we uh, went through and ran all of the system checks in the uh, service manual. So I went through and ran all the system checks that pertain to the ECU. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's test for sparks since we find out. Let's see. Go uh, ahead. I got keys. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. They stick them back here. Okay, we're going to test for spark. It might just fire right up because yeah. it's cooled off for yep. 10 seconds. Oh, it's got spark. You guys saw what, what just happened. Right, we're we're not crazy. Well, we we are crazy people. But this is exactly what happened. That should not have started right now. Should not have started, and it's not because it's hot. Because it's not hot. One two minutes before, we just tried to start it. One start. Yeah. Well, we yeah, we just rolled it in. We were in the road. Start, 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 start. And hold on, it just started on three. 
<laughs> right? It, it's it didn't start on, and it you touch the starter. The, the yeah, button. I just touched. I didn't touch throttle or anything. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's weird. It's guys. I don't know. I it, like comment down below what you think it is. But make sure you do it before right now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we can. <laughs> look at them and figure out what's wrong with this thing. That's you know, right, yeah, yeah. In the, some kind of pass. <laughs> we need it to F up again, so we just check spark. That's it. So... I had kind of the same problem when I first thought my bike is. They have something in Sweden called V-Power. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have it over yeah. there. Yeah, Viking Power? Yeah. 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 Uh, but there's a, there's a, there's a write-up that one member has done on tuning the um, TPS by ear. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I will see if I can send that one to you. Oh, that'd be perfect. It's, it's It, it is better than Tuesday yeah. right now, you know. Uh, so we'll see what it does now that it's hot, which I think it's going to do exactly what it's expected to do. I'll just give it some throttle. No worries. No worries. I'll give it a little throttle. Probably when it's cold, you won't need it at all. Yeah. Uh, and we did richen it up, so it should behave a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably look different. All, yeah. all of it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, the sun is still up high. Yep. You have time. It's 5.30 right now, so. You put down two hours on the road. If I, if I, bumble. if I can get, well, anywhere that way is bonus. Right. Uh, 1969. 1969. Is your great grandfather's truck? Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. Dude, you made it. Oh, shit. So we'll put this GoPro on and we'll hit the road and we'll see where the day takes us. Early bird gets the worm. Let's go, buddy. The adventure continues. I, I lost my exhaust. So this guy fell off the motorcycle on the interstate and now thankfully we're able to find it now we have to walk back to the motorcycle
Okay guys, uh, we are roughly 100 miles away from home. And this is what's happened. We just died on the road. More of the same of what it was doing before. Uh, what it did about a week ago, a little over eight days ago. Eight days ago and what we fought with on was it on uh, Wednesday and Thursday? Okay guys, this is where we end up. Shut down yesterday, about 83 miles from home. Still, this is overnight. Still not doing the same thing. So we are here in, I rented a, got an Uber yesterday the airport rented a car drove it home picked up the truck and now we're gonna load this sucker up and then we'll sort it out at home a crazy adventure on a 40 year old motorcycle that had been left for dead been left for dead stored outdoors without spark plugs and we got the engine free we got it to fire up we got it to work and then we rode it almost 3,000 miles Rode it across the country. It was incredible. We we made our way through it, and guys, I'm not saying you got to go ride a motorcycle across country, but you need to do something, right? We all need to do something that that puts us outside our comfort zone, so that you 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 get to see what happens. I mean, really, like I said before, what's the worst thing happen? Is it going to break down? Probably probably gonna break down but the worst thing happened is I wake up June 10th and I didn't give it a go and that's what we did you know we we stepped out and we tried it and I think we were extremely successful this is still the best motorcycle ever made I'm not saying the Kawasaki GPZ 1100 is the best motorcycle I'm saying this is the best motorcycle ever made